Sir Richard Burton eloquently captured the spirit of wandering off into the unknown with this travel quote. The gladdest moment in human life, methinks, is a departure into unknown lands. End quote. Our journey began a little differently than usual. The overland truck we were supposed to take got into a little accident the night before, leaving our organizers with the hassle of looking for plan B, literally a few hours to departure. Talk about a way to start an adventure. Luckily, we got a fantastic luxury truck and van for our trip. I met some dope friends who shared their fish manicure experience in Tanzania as their highlight trip with Starboard Safaris. Have you done that before? How are you? I'm good, how are you? Then thank you. So good morning. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, I was to take a temperature. <laughs> As a requirement of any travel arrangements during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, safety measures such as temperature checks, wearing of face masks, regular sanitizing and social distancing were strictly observed. The highway from Nairobi to Sabashi is incredibly smooth and scenic. We are en route to the sacred mountain of Ololokwe in Samburu County. Samburu is one of the iconic places to visit in northern Kenya because of how the national park is teeming with wildlife and how the Ewasongiro sleepily flows past towering palms. Located about 340 kilometers from Nairobi through Nanyuki and Isiolo, it's easy to get there with any car. I'd like to recommend Starboard Safaris. Our next stop is at Sagana, a small industrial town in central Kenya. It is along the Nairobi Nyeri Highway, about 100 kilometers north of Nairobi. Its name comes from Kenya's longest river, Sagana River, which is also called the Ghana. The town also inspired the rumba song Afro Mtoto Sagana. Mount Kenya is right there and Starboard is right there Our next stop, Nanyuki. Nanyuki is a town in central Kenya and is a two and a half hours drive from Nairobi. It is right at the center of Kenya and is known mainly for its equator point. 
locals and tourists alike pay a visit to stand on the equator. For those technically interested, locals arrange for an experiment to depict how the Coriolis effect works. The setup is fairly simple. One jug with a hole at the bottom, one liter of water and two small pieces of sticks, like matchsticks, and an empty bowl. The first step of the experiment is done at 10 feet north of the equator. Here the water is poured into a jug while the hole at the bottom is blocked by our finger. The sticks are allowed to float in the water. Then, the final step is to remove our finger from the bottom of the jug and allow the water to flow into the empty bowl below. At this instant, you will see the stick starting to rotate in a clockwise direction. When the same experiment is repeated at 10 feet south of the equator, it is noticed that the sticks move in an anti-clockwise direction. And when the experiment is conducted on the equator, it is noticed that the sticks don't move at all. This basically shows the deflection or the force that is an artifact of the Earth's rotation.